I'm gonna close with a story. My truck driver is called Bow to Big Joe to Fan 309. A story written by Red Solvine several years ago. And, uh, Well, you see, um, it seems I was back on the East Coast a few years back, and I was just trying to make me a buck. And you know, the times got hard, and oh, Christ, I got down on my luck. And I got tired of just roaming and bumming around. So I started thumbing my way back to my whole hometown. <laughs> you know, I made quite a few miles in the first couple of days, and Christ, I figured I'd be home in a week if my luck held out this way. But the third night, I got myself stranded. And it was a cold, lonely crossroads with the rain pouring down. And I was a hungry, tired, freezing, thirsty. In fact, I don't caught a chill. But about that time, the lights of an old semi have to top the hill. Boy, you should have seen me smile when I heard them air brakes come on. And, well, Christ, I climbed up into that cab where I knew it'd be warm, and at the wheel sat a big man. Christ, he must have weighed 210, and he stuck out a big hand, and he said with a grin, Big Joe's the name. And his hair is called Phantom 309. <laughs> well, I asked him why I called his rig such a name. He just looked at me and said, Why, son, this here rig will put them all to shame. Well, there ain't a driver on this or any other line, for that matter, that's seen nothing but the tail lights of Big Joe and Phantom 309. So we rode and we talked the better part of the night, and I told my stories, and Joe told his. Well, until the, the, the lights of a truck stop mysteriously rolled into sight, Joe turned to me and said, I'm sorry, son. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid this is just as far as you go, because... Cause, well, you see, I kind of got to be making a, well, I kind of got to be making a turn up just off the road piece, and I'll be damned if he didn't toss me a dime as he threw her in low. He said, go on in there and get yourself a hot cup of coffee on Big Joe. And I mean to tell you, when Joe and his rig pulled off into the night, and nothing flat that was clean out of sight. And I walked into the old stop, and I ordered me up a cup of mud, saying, Big Joe's setting this dude up. <laughs> And then the guitar hit the wall. <laughs> but it got so deathly quiet in that place you could hear a pin drop. The waiter's face turned kind of pale. I said, what's the matter? Did I say something wrong? I kind of said with a halfway grin. He said, no, son. He said, no, son, it'll happen every now and then. Well, you see, every driver in here knows Big Joe's son, but let me tell you what happened just 10 years ago. Out there at that cold, lonely crossroads where you flag Joe down. Well, there was a whole busload of kids, and they were just coming from school, and they were right in the middle when Joe topped the hill. And it could have been slaughtered, except when Joe turned his wheels and a jackknife, and he went into a skid. Now, folks around right here say he gave his life to save that bunch of kids. And you know that out there at that cold, lonely crossroads was the end of the line for Big Joe and Phantom 309. But you know, it's funny because cause every now and then, every now and then when there's a kind of a full buttery moon and it's all melted off to one side, he said, old Joe will stop and give you a ride. So yeah, son, he said to me, go in there and get yourself another cup of coffee. It's all in the house. Well, I want you to hang on to that dime, though. I want you to hang on to that dime and keep it as kind of a souvenir. Kind of a souvenir of Big Joe. Big Joe and Phantom 309. That's it. Tom Waits, live from Lee First Studio this evening on KWFM. We'll be back in a moment right after these words.